Um, all right, well, hi everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Michael Haas. I'm a uh, graduate student with the uh, Narong Lab at Harvard. Um, and today I wanna to talk to you about developing on-chip interfaces to color centers. Um, so we've heard a lot about color centers today, um, in particular why they're such a good candidate for a quantum network node, uh, which is that they have a really long spin coherence and they have a robust spin photon interface. Um, however, one of these properties, uh, the long spin coherence often comes from its isolation. And that sort of makes it difficult to enable spin-spin interactions on chip. Um, we've heard a bit about two methods to overcome this lack of interaction. Uh, one of these is a local dipole coupling, which you see uh, here on the right, where the electron spin uh, uses hyperfine coupling to couple to nearby nuclear spins. Um, this is sort of what um, Mihir was talking about with the um, silicon. Um, this is great, but it sort of only allows you access to kind of a maximum of 30 nearby Ancilla qubits. Uh, we've also heard a lot about heralded entanglement, uh, which was most famously shown in this experiment down here with the Ronald Hansen group, where they entangled NV centers uh, 1.3 kilometers across. Um, however, what we want to think about is thinking about ways to couple these spins uh, on chip, not requiring uh, herald and entanglement and allowing access to arbitrary distances as well as coupling to other gigahertz platforms like microwave photons and superconducting qubits. This would be really great because we can expand the register of accessible quantum memories by just connecting more color centers together. Um, as well as this, we can also connect these superconducting qubits to these quantum memories and then through those to a larger photonic quantum network. Um, which is something that we talked about earlier. Um, so there's two approaches I'm going to talk about. The first approach is using phonons to uh, mediate this interaction. Phonons are called the universal transducer because they have been seen to have low loss coupling to a bunch of important gigahertz systems um, like um, optomechanical optim coupl coupling to uh, photons, uh, to superconducting qubits and also to um, spins. The spin defect that we're going to focus on in particular is uh, the silicon vacancy center, um, which is one of the huge uh, color centers used in thrust three, uh, because its large strain, strain susceptibility makes it a key candidate for uh, the strong coupling to phonons. Um, in this diagram up here on the right, which is the LeMond paper, um, we see that you can use uh, microwave pulses to selectively couple different SIV centers via the emission and absorption of these propagating phonons. And as such, you can create long distance coupling between SIV centers. Um, and if you can enable this interaction, you can combine this with a uh, piezoelectric coupling to actually um, enable the connection of superconducting qubits to both a uh, spin quantum memory, but also use the spin photon uh, interface to then connect these superconducting qubits to the quantum internet. Um, once you're here, you can implement a protocol like Stefan talked about, where you use herald entanglement to connect different ships of superconducting qubits to create a larger distributed uh, computer, which is something that people seem to have a lot of interest in pursuing. This is sort of one of the more conventional approaches to on-chip interactions. Uh, and I want to talk about also magnon media interactions. Magnons are a little less, known in the little less known in the community, but they are collective excitations of spin waves in ferromagnetic, ferromagnetic materials. Um, so one of the key materials used is YIG, um, yttrium ion garnet. And if you uh, have a common coupling to a single magnon mode of two spins, these spins can actually couple to each other. Um, this ability greatly enhances the range of spin spin coupling, um, which this paper has shown to 
have nearly 70 nanometers of strong coupling interaction. Uh, this is compared to the uh, previous dipole coupling that we talked about, where this range is effectively limited to three nanometers, um, which is those nuclear spins that we talked about in the first slide. Um, there is a bit of a problem, which is that um, YIG has been known to have a lattice mismatch with diamond, which prevents a challenge towards actually fabricating low loss YIG cavities on chip. Um, however, there has been recent work in the past three, four months that has shown that another uh, ferromagnetic material, Vicni X, uh, has a favorable lattice mismatch, lattice match to diamond, which means that it can then be fabricated to create nanomagnetic cavities on diamond. Um, as such, you can actually feasibly see magnetics becoming a uh, strong mediator of these spin-spin interactions. Uh, on top of this, there's also been shown to have a microwave photon magnon coupling uh, by the Tang Group at Yale, who's also part of the um, ERC, uh, that through that interaction, you can then create an effective coupling between magnonic modes and superconducting qubits which then allows the same accessibility to um, superconducting qubits connecting to spins as we saw with the phenonic case. Thank you. Uh, that was just a quick overview of a couple of on-chip mechanisms that we can use to create this coupling.